dedicated to giving new life to old masterpieces, giving a voice to newly discovered works, and bringing audiences the eccentric nature of Baroque music. Have questions? Want to learn more? Well, so do we. Dan and Sarah join us now. Good morning. How are the both of you? Good morning. We're great. Thanks for having, uh, having us on. I am glad that I'm actually able to learn to say the word Baroque, and apparently I'm probably saying it incorrectly there. I'm trying, and I feel like I got to put some pizzazz behind it. What I'm learning, though, we actually are all quite familiar with this kind of music, maybe just haven't realized what it's called. Is that a fair statement to begin our segment here, Dan? Yeah, this is stuff you know you hear on the radio, you hear every day, you hear snippets of it in pop tunes. It's kind of in the ether, you would say, but we're kind of capitalizing on just playing purely Baroque music uh, this concert and at St. Pete Baroque. And I, again, learning about this type of music is something that, of course, we can all appreciate. What drew you? We want to get your take, Sarah. Oh, well, I was drawn to the different sound world of the period instruments uh, back when I was in college. So I actually started doing this many years ago, took a hiatus. Mm -hmm. But it's a warmer, richer sound than you'll hear on modern instruments, which tend to have metal-based strings. These are more gut-based strings, often sheep's gut. The cat gut is an old wives tale it's not correct anymore but so that you just get a warmer richer more intimate quality from these instruments well speaking of the instruments i mean these are ones that you brought with us they are different looking i mean i'm already appreciating the craftsmanship that yeah. you of the one that you've got for us dan yeah so we play on uh, authentic period instruments from the 1700s um, and so either they are instruments from that time period or they are historical recreations and so this instrument, for example, um, it's not a violin, it's called the viola d'amore, oh. which means the viola of love. It's a really odd bird instrument, and even at the time in the 1700s it was rarely used, but it has um, these resonating sympathetic strings underneath the playing strings. Oh yeah, look at that. And so it's actually an Italian take on a Middle Eastern instrument. So. Um, that's what that instrument is, and um, they generally have a carved head. Um, a lot of the times they have a cherub that's blindfolded to symbolize the sentiment that love is blind. So the sentiment of the day was built into the instruments, and um, you know, this is a really rare instrument that you're not gonna hear really almost anywhere else. Oh, well, speaking of not hearing things anywhere else, we are going to get a performance here uh, of a piece that was actually going to be played. However, a lot of this is improv. So the music that you will hear the night of the show is something you might not hear again, right? Talk about the importance of the improvisation when it comes to this style of music. Well, improvisational ornaments were very important. Um, so you'd get the basic outline of a bass line or a tune and a savvy performer would be expected to make it their own, uh, yeah. much like jazz improv works. Yeah. And so a performer's skill was based on the fantastical nature of their ornaments, how skillful, how skillful they were with creating things on the spot. I like that. And just being able to, of course, get to know some of the artists, some of the musicians. Again, I, I was kind of like, oh, when I saw the type of music, I was like, oh, I don't know anything about this. Then you realize you could. That's also with some of the musicians, too, that you are able to pay homage to. Is that correct? Yeah. So we've got a lot of different musicians on this program. And, and the whole theme of the program is lifting unheard Baroque voices. So while I love the greats, you know, like Bach and Handel, there were yeah. other people at the time. And so we kind of want to shine a light. Ah on their efforts as well. So we have women composers who there's just only really a handful from that time period. And we have a few other composers who just really aren't heard very often for one reason or another. Um, and that's sort of the theme that we're going with at the concert. I'm curious, what do you say to people if, when you introduce yourself and you say, you know, oh, I'm involved, you know, with St. Pete Baroque and people are kind of, I'm assuming you get questions. What do you say to those people as we get ready to not only hear a performance, but tell people how they can buy tickets to this performance? Um, I basically tell people that these are instruments that you're not going to hear at your normal symphony orchestra. Um, these are rare instruments that were only heard in the 16 and 1700s, and we have them, and you can hear them at the concert. Pretty fun to be doing something so unique for the both of you. I'm assuming it would be. And yes. as musicians, to be able to do something that we're not used to, learn a little bit more about. If you are hooked, want to know more, there's the website. There's the information for tickets. St. Pete Baroque presents Lifting Unheard Baroque Voices. Again, all happening on September 10th, 2 o'clock at the Palladium. Of course, you can check out the Palladium website. That's where you can also get tickets as well.